Taurus clicked off the broadcast with trembling fingers, his desperate pleas for help falling on deaf ears across the cosmos, with one exception. The human ship Odyssey had intercepted his transmission and diverted to mount a courageous rescue, even as his own people callously ignored him. Slumped over the flickering console, Taurus's bulbous eyes darted frantically between the displays. The research station groaned around him like a wounded beast, its damaged power core sputtering and spasming, threatening to annihilate everything within a dozen light years. A shimmering force field, the station's final line of defense was all that contained the seething radioactive fury of the dying star's energy, greedily siphoned by the Tholian scientists. But now only one remained. The rest of the research team lay strewn about, their exoskeletons shattered, Icor pooling on the decks. The sudden solar flare had scoured the station's unshielded sections, clean of life in a searing instant. Emergency bulkheads had slammed down, but too late to save Taurus's colleagues from being flash-cooked inside their own shells. Only Taurus remained, for what little time was left. He estimated mere hours before the field collapsed, and the white-hot plasma roared forth to atomize the station. Its unchecked wrath would surge across the sector, burning colonies to cinders, and boiling away fragile atmospheres. Millions would perish, and it would be all his fault for failing to predict the kill star's volatility, for failing to keep its baleful energies securely leashed. He had to hope, had to believe these mysterious humans would arrive in time, with the skills and knowledge to avert calamity. No other help was coming. The Tholian High Command, safely ensconced in their crystal spires, a galaxy away, had curtly acknowledged his distress call and indicated that the situation was being monitored. Cowards. They didn't grasp that if the field fell, they'd lose far more than this benighted station and its fools. On the scopes, a blip. The human ship. The Odyssey. Taurus clasped his feelers in relief as his multifaceted eyes narrowed on the screen. They were here. They'd listened. They'd come, all this way, to save him to save everyone. Such compassion for a complete stranger, of an entirely alien race, it was, it was... The humans were hailing. A face appeared. A strange visage, only two eyes, no protective covering, just soft flesh. So different. So alien. He'd never seen their like before. What kind of beings were these? The man spoke, his voice carrying an odd confidence. Tholian Research Station, this is Captain Stephen Sullivan of the Earthship Odyssey. We received your distress signal, and we're here to help, preparing to dock and render assistance. Advise you to stand by and prepare for rescue operations. We'll get you and your station through this together. Emotions churned in Taurus's crop as the transmission ended. He was no longer alone, no longer abandoned. These brave humans were here now. They would save him. Save the station prevent a cataclysm, do what his own craven leaders would not. And then, and then he didn't know what, but in that moment one thought burned bright in his mind, a thought that would change the galaxy forever. Humans were the only ones who'd answered the call. The Odyssey slid into the station's docking port, latching on with a clang and hiss of airlocks, Captain Stephen Sullivan readied his boarding party, consisting of his scarred and hardened first officer Jack Hawkins and a squad of the ship's toughest security personnel armed with deadly pulse rifles and combat armor. As the airlock cycled open, they charged into the station with weapons up, scanning for threats. But only an eerie silence greeted them, punctuated by the groans and creaks of overstressed bulkheads. Signs of heavy damage were everywhere, scorch marks, shattered conduits, Corpses of Tholian researchers tumbling through the air, carapaces cracked open and leaking viscous fluids. Sullivan grimaced inside his helmet as they made their way to the control room. Taurus, I know you're in there, Sullivan called out as they stacked up outside the sealed blast doors. We received your distress call. We're here to help you, but you need to let us in. I, uh, I cannot trust you, came the shaky reply, distorted by static. You humans... You're known for your aggression, your need to dominate. How do I know this isn't a trick? Sullivan sighed. They didn't have time for this. 
The entire station shuddered as the destabilized power core let out an ominous rumble. Listen to me. Whatever you may have heard about us, we're here to prevent a disaster that could kill millions. You included. Now open this door. No response. Sullivan's jaw clenched. He nodded to Hawkins. Get this door open now, whatever it takes. Hawkins pulled a hacking device from his belt and jammed it into the door's control panel, fingers flying over the keys. Suddenly alarms blared and crimson lights flashed as the station's security systems came to life. Hatches popped open and a swarm of Tholian battle drones poured out, all glittering carapaces and stabbing laser beams. Contact! Open fire! Hawkins roared. The human soldiers scattered for cover and filled the corridor with searing energy bolts. The drones attacked relentlessly, scuttling along the walls and ceilings, trying to outflank the defenders. Humans and machines tore into each other at point-blank range in a vicious melee. Sullivan ducked as a drone leapt at him, its razor-sharp mandibles snapping shut centimeters from his face. He shoved his rifle barrel into the thing's underbelly and pulled the trigger, blasting it apart in a spray of shrapnel and ichor. All around him, his people were locked in desperate combat, smashing drones with rifle butts, fists and raw nerve. This wasn't working. At this rate, they'd be overrun long before they could reach Taurus. And every second wasted brought that power core closer to meltdown. There had to be another way. Cease fire! Sullivan bellowed over the comms. Everyone stand down, now! Startled, his troops lowered their weapons, backing away from the drones still hissing and skittering towards them. In the sudden lull, Sullivan slowly reached up and removed his helmet. The young Tholian scientist appeared on a wall screen, mandibles quivering in shock at the sight of his alien features. Taurus, I'm asking you face to face to trust us, Sullivan said, holding the scientist's gaze. I'm putting my life in your hands. Anything happens to me now, that's on you. So please, let us help. Not for Earth, not for the hegemony, for everyone, every single soul in this sector. Taurus stared at Sullivan for a long, tense moment. The human could see the fear, the indecision, the lifetime of conditioned distrust warring behind those glittering compound eyes. But then, slowly, Taurus reached out and touched a control panel. The drones froze in place. The blast door slid open with a hiss. Taurus stood there in the doorway, trembling but resolute. Come then, he said, if you're truly here to help, then I will accept it. Sullivan strode forward into the control room, his people fanning out behind him. He looked around at the pulsing readouts, the flashing warning size, feeling the deck plates shuddering beneath his boots. It was worse than he'd feared. The core was nearing total failure. He flipped open his calm unit. Odyssey, this is Sullivan. I need every engineer and tech you can spare over here on the double. Tell them to bring all the equipment they can carry. As his crew rushed to obey, Sullivan turned to Taurus. All right, we'll handle the heavy lifting and patching, but you're going to have to guide us. None of us know hegemony tech like you. I need you to tell us everything you can about this power core and how to stabilize it. Taurus nodded moving over to a control console and pulling up schematics with shaking appendages. I will help however I can. I... I do not wish to see my failures cost so many lives, even human ones. Sullivan allowed himself a tight smile as he moved to join the scientist, the old enmity between their kinds momentarily forgotten in the face of potential cataclysm. They had a long road ahead and so little time. But maybe... Just maybe they had a shot at this. If a human and a Tholian could put aside their grievances and preconceptions to work as one. Because the alternative was too horrific to contemplate. As Sullivan and Taurus hunched over the sparking consoles, fingers flying over the controls in a desperate bid to stabilize the power core, a new voice crackled over the comms. Captain Sullivan glared at the screen as it resolved into the stern face of a Tholian military commander, resplendent in his gleaming exoskeleton and adorned with the insignia of high rank. This is Admiral Zale of the Tholian warship Nexus, the figure snapped, his mandibles clacking with barely concealed hostility. We have intercepted your distress call, 
and have reason to believe you humans are responsible for this act of sabotage, surrender the traitor Taurus and your ship immediately, or face the consequences. Sullivan straightened, his jaw tightening. Admiral, there's been a misunderstanding. We're here at Taurus's request to help contain a catastrophic power core failure. Time is of the essence. If we don't... Spare me your lies, human Zal snarled. You are in violation of hegemony space and have committed an act of war. I will not repeat myself. Surrender or be destroyed. Sullivan looked at Taurus, who seemed torn between fear and outrage. The power core chose that moment to shudder violently, nearly throwing them off their feet. Sullivan gripped the console, mind racing. The Odyssey was a science vessel, no match for a Tholian warship. They'd be blown out of the stars in seconds. He needed to buy time. He turned back to the screen, forcing his voice to remain steady. Admiral, I assure you we have no hostile intentions, but we cannot abandon our efforts here. Thousands of lives are at stake. Let us complete our work, and I give you my word, we will submit to any investigation you deem necessary. Sale's eyes glinted dangerously. You have one hour, human. Power down your engines and weapons. Prepare to be boarded. If you do not comply, we will take you by force. The screen went dark. Sullivan immediately whirled to his first officer. Hawkins, with me. We need a plan to disable that warship now. As they moved off, Taurus caught Sullivan's arm. Captain, I must speak with Zell. He is a reasonable man. If I can just explain... He's not interested in explanations, Sullivan said grimly. He wants a fight, and we're going to have to give him one, if we want to survive this. Taurus looked stricken, but nodded. He turned back to the power core controls as Sullivan and Hawkins ducked out of the command center and made their way swiftly through the damaged corridors. Odyssey, this is Sullivan, he called over the comms. We've got a Tholian warship breathing down our necks. I need you to... He was cut off as the entire station suddenly bucked and heaved like a beached whale. Alarms shrieked, and emergency lights flickered wildly. Sullivan and Hawkins were flung bodily into a wall, the breath driven from their lungs. Taurus! Sullivan gasped into his calm. What's happening? The Tholian's voice came back high and panicked. The power core! It's destabilizing! I can't control it! On the view screen. Sullivan watched in horror as a roiling wave of energy erupted from the station's midsection, engulfing the Tholian warship in a blaze of searing light. The Nexus reeled, its shields flickering and dying, as secondary explosions burst across its hull. Now, Sullivan roared, target their weapons and fire. The Odyssey's forward batteries lit up, lancing out with pinpoint accuracy. The EMP burst caught the Nexus amidships, shorting out its systems in a cascade of overloads. The once mighty warship drifted, dead in space, escape pods ejecting in a flurry from its stricken hull. On the screen, Zal's face reappeared, contorted with rage. This treachery will not stand. I will see you burn for this, Sullivan. You and all your misbegotten kind. Then the signal cut out as the Nexus's comm array failed. Sullivan allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction before the deck pitched beneath him once more. Damage reports flooded in, frantic voices spilling from the comm. Hull breach in Section 12! We're venting atmosphere! Captain, a plasma conduit just ruptured on Deck 4 were cut off from the hangar bay. Sullivan fought his way back to the command center, Hawkins at his heels. Taurus looked up as they entered, his compound eyes wide and frantic. The collapse is accelerating, he cried. We have only minutes before the core goes critical. We must evacuate. Sullivan looked at the readouts, his heart sinking. The scientist was right. They'd done all they could, but it wasn't enough. The station was tearing itself apart. He slapped his comm badge. Odyssey, lock onto my signal and beam us out of here. But the voice that came back was strained and full of static. Negative, Captain. Damage to the array. Can't get a lock. Too much interference. Sullivan cursed. Of course, the energy surge, the debris field. The transporters were useless. They were trapped on a dying station with no way out. He turned to Taurus, his mind racing. You know this station. Is there another way off? Escape pods? Shuttles? The Tholian shook his head numbly. All destroyed or launch bays blocked by debris? Then his eyes widened. 
Wait, the maintenance tunnels. They run the length of the station. With airlocks to the outside, we might be able to... Sullivan nodded sharply. Do it. Hawkins, gather the men. We're leaving now. As Taurus led the way into the bowels of the station, the metal groaning and twisting around them like a living thing in its death throes, Sullivan couldn't shake the feeling that they were descending into the belly of the beast. The flickering lights, the hissing steam, the echoing clangs and bangs, all felt like the station itself was trying to thwart their escape. And then the drones came. Malfunctioning maintenance and security units, their IFF protocols scrambled by the energy surge, attacked with mindless ferocity. Sullivan and his team fought them off with pulse rifles and wielding tools, Taurus guiding them through the labyrinthine passageways as best he could. But the tunnels were a maze, the station's layout shifting and changing as sections collapsed and new debris fields formed. They were running out of time, the heat and vibration rising to a fever pitch. They had to find those airlocks, they had to get out, they had to warn the Odyssey, the fate of thousands hung in the balance. Failure was not an option. But as another drone swarm burst from a ruptured conduit, all snapping claws and searing cutting beams, Sullivan began to wonder if the universe had other plans. Sullivan, Taurus, and the battered boarding party pushed through the groaning, shuddering corridors of the dying station, fighting past malfunctioning bulkheads and geysers of scalding plasma. They rounded a corner and pulled up short at the sight of a sealed laboratory door, its reinforced surface buckling under the stress. Sullivan raised his rifle to blast it open, but Taurus grabbed his arm. Wait, there are life signs inside. The human captain lowered his weapon as Taurus worked frantically at the door controls. With a hiss of hydraulics, the heavy portal slid open, revealing a huddled group of Tholian scientists, their exoskeletons cracked and ichor stained. At their center stood an older Tholian, his carapace etched with the scars of long service. Taurus rushed to him. Dr. Varys, thank the stars you're alive. Varys clasped Taurus's feelers, his compound eyes gleaming with relief and fear. Taurus, my boy, I feared the worst when the flare hit. But there's no time. The station, we were sabotaged. Sabotaged? Sullivan stepped forward. By who? Separatists. Hardliners opposed to any dealings with humans. They infiltrated my team, caused the core overload, and I fear they may have agents on your ship as well. Sullivan's blood ran cold. He slapped his comm badge. Odyssey, come in, Odyssey, respond. Static. Interference. The very air seemed to vibrate with the energy bleeding from the ruptured core. Sullivan cursed. He had to warn his crew. But how? Taurus's fingers flew over a wall panel. His brow furrowed in concentration. I might be able to piggyback a signal through the station's emergency band. Give me a moment. Suddenly the deck lurched violently beneath their feet, throwing them against the bulkheads. Klaxons blared as the station's computer intoned in a flat, emotionless voice. Warning! Power core containment failure imminent. Structural collapse in progress. Sullivan hauled himself upright, his heart pounding. On the far wall, a cracked monitor flickered to life, displaying a grainy image of the Odyssey's bridge. But instead of the familiar faces of his crew, he saw only masked Tholian figures, their weapons trained on the viewscreen. Attention, humans, one of them hissed. Your ship is now under our control. Any attempt to retake it will result in the immediate execution of your crew. As if to punctuate the threat, the Odyssey's weapons blazed to life, lancing into the crippled station with ruthless precision. Laboratories, habitation modules, and vital support systems vanished in blossoms of flame, the vacuum of space rushing in to claim the vented atmosphere. Sullivan and the others staggered as the deck heaved and buckled, the tortured metal screaming like a wounded beast. They stumbled into the lab, sealing the door behind them as the corridor collapsed in a shower of sparks and debris. Taurus slammed his feeler against the wall in frustration and despair. It's too late. The saboteurs have the Odyssey. They'll destroy the station, erase all evidence of their treachery. Sullivan's jaw tightened. He met Taurus's gaze, a fierce light in his eyes. Not if we stop them first. The Tholian scientist blinked. How? The escape pods. 
We use them to board the Odyssey, take back control. Varys shook his head. Madness, you'll never make it through the bombardment. We don't have a choice. It's the only way to save both our peoples. Taurus looked at Sullivan for a long moment, compound eyes unreadable. Then he straightened, mandibles set with resolve. I'm with you, Captain. Let's do this. Sullivan nodded grimly. He turned to Hawkins. Jack, you and Dr. Varys stay here. Do what you can to stabilize the core. Buy us some time. We'll signal when the Odyssey is secure. Hawkins gripped his friend's arm. Give him hell, Sully! As Sullivan and Taurus raced towards the escape pod bay, the station bucking and heaving around them, a new threat emerged. The distinctive angular silhouette of a Tholian warship, the Nexus, materialized through the debris field, its weapons glowing with deadly intent. The attention humans and traitorous scum, Admiral Zell's voice boomed over the comm, surrender immediately or be destroyed. In the pod bay, Sullivan and Tora shared a look of grim understanding. They both knew Zal would never listen, never believe their desperate truth. There was only one way forward. Sullivan sealed his helmet and strapped into the cramped pod beside Taurus. The Tholian's long, segmented fingers danced over the controls, plotting a vector. Course laid in, Taurus reported, his voice tight. Straight for the Nexus, use her bulk for cover, then alter heading for the Odyssey. Sullivan nodded, gripping the restraints as the pod launched with a bone-jarring thud. Instantly, the tiny craft was engulfed in a maelstrom of whirling debris and lashing energy, the Nexus and Odyssey trading blistering volleys high overhead. Sullivan gritted his teeth as the pod jinked and juked, Taurus guiding them through the impossible chaos with preternatural skill. Beams of incandescent death sliced past, near enough to scorch the hull. The pod shuddered and groaned, its limited shield straining. Slowly, inexorably, they drew closer to the looming flank of the Nexus, its serrated hull blotting out the stars. Taurus angled the pod to skim along the warship's ventral surface, the larger vessel's shields and armor plating, shielding them from the worst of the Odyssey's fire. Almost there, Taurus muttered, his eyes locked on the instruments. Prepare for hard dock in three, two. The pod slammed into the Odyssey's hull like a battering ram, emergency clamps biting deep into the ship's armored skin. Sullivan was already out of his restraints, pulse rifle in hand, as Taurus triggered the explosive bolts. The pod's hatch blew open with a screech of rending metal, and the two of them plunged into the smoke-filled corridor beyond. Alarms blared as pressure doors slammed shut, cutting off the howl of escaping atmosphere. Sullivan and Taurus moved swiftly through the ship's ravaged innards, the gravity fluctuating wildly, the deck pitching beneath their boots. They encountered no resistance, no crew, only the blasted remnants of desperate battle. The scale of the destruction, the evidence of the brutal swiftness of the saboteur's attack, filled Sullivan with a cold, simmering rage. His ship, his people, he would make the traitors pay. The bridge doors loomed before them, sealed and barricaded from within. Sullivan motioned Taurus to the side, then unleashed a storm of plasma into the heavy portal, the metal glowing cherry red, then white hot. A final kick sent the weakened doors crashing inward. Pulse rifle leveled, Sullivan charged onto the bridge with a roar of challenge. The Tholian saboteurs whirled to face him, their own weapons rising to meet the threat. But Sullivan was already among them, rifle bucking in his grip, spitting streams of superheated death. Two saboteurs went down in the opening volley, their exoskeletons shattered and smoking. The others scattered for cover, returning fire with hissing beams of energy. Sullivan dove behind the helm console, popping up to snap off shots whenever he had a clear line. Taurus was right beside him, a salvaged Tholian sidearm gripped in his feelers. The scientist's face was set in a mask of determination and cold fury as he traded fire with his treacherous brethren. A saboteur rose from cover, aiming his rifle at Sullivan's exposed back. Taurus saw him, swung his own weapon around, and drilled the traitor through his primary sensory cluster with a precise beam. The saboteur toppled, Icor spraying. Sullivan flashed Taurus a grateful nod, then vaulted over the sparking console, closing with the remaining saboteurs. It devolved into a brutal melee, rifle butts and knife-edged feelers clashing, 
ichor and blood spattering the deck. Sullivan fought with a savage intensity, his own wounds forgotten, every blow fueled by the need to save his ship, his crew, to end this madness. And then it was over. The last saboteur crumpled under a vicious rifle-stock strike to his thorax, and the bridge fell silent, save for the fitful crackle of shattered displays and the heavy breathing of the victors. Sullivan stumbled to the command chair and slapped the comm panel. This is the captain, all saboteurs neutralized. Damage control teams, get me a full report. Medical, get up here on the double. Taurus. He turned to the Tholian scientist, who was leaning heavily against the weapons station, Icor seeping from a deep crack in his carapace. Taurus looked up at him, compound eyes dimming. We did it, Captain, he rasped. We took back your ship, saved both our peoples. Then his shattered body slid to the deck, and he moved no more. Sullivan knelt beside the fallen Tholian, grief and respect warring on his soot-streaked features. Taurus had given his life to stop his own people's madness, to forge a fragile understanding between their kinds. He would be remembered. He would be honoured. But there was no time to mourn, no time at all. Because the Nexus still loomed on the viewscreen, its weapons charging for a final, devastating salvo. And on the station below, the power core was going critical, an expanding sun of ravenous energy that would consume them all. Sullivan leapt into the command chair, his fingers flying over the controls. He had only one chance, one desperate gambit to save everything he held dear. The Odyssey's engines roared to life, the inertial compensators straining as the ship hurled itself forward, placing its battered bulk between the station and the Nexus. All hands brace for impact, Sullivan roared over the comm. Divert all power to shields and structural integrity. The Tholian warship opened fire, a blistering onslaught of ravening energy that hammered into the Odyssey like the fist of an angry god. The human ship shuddered and groaned, its shields flickering, its hull buckling under the relentless barrage. But still it held position, an implacable wall of defiance absorbing the punishment, buying precious seconds for the station below. On the Odyssey's bridge, consoles exploded in showers of sparks, the lights flickering, the deck pitching like a storm-tossed sea. Sullivan clung to the armrests, teeth bared in a rictus snarl, refusing to yield, refusing to fail. And in the heart of the station, the power core reached critical mass, its containment fields shattering, a ravenous tide of star-hot plasma expanding outward in a blinding wave of destruction. It engulfed the station, vaporizing metal and stone, reducing all to atomic ash. The Odyssey heaved as the shockwave struck, the already strained shields collapsing, the hull breaching in a dozen places. Atmosphere howled from the rents, crewmen clutched at shattered bulkheads, the ship tumbling helplessly through the maelstrom. And still the wave expanded, slamming into the Nexus with unimaginable force. The Tholian ship reeled, its shields shattering like glass, its hull crumpling like foil. Escape pods blasted away in all directions as the mighty warship broke apart, consumed by the all-devouring plasma. On the Odyssey's fractured bridge, Sullivan hauled himself upright, blood streaming from a gash on his forehead, one arm hanging useless at his side. He stared at the viewscreen, at the dissipating plasma cloud, the glittering debris field that was all that remained of the station and the Nexus. It was over. The threat was ended. The saboteur's plan had been thwarted. But at what cost? Taurus was dead. The Odyssey was crippled, perhaps beyond repair. And the fragile understanding between their peoples, so newly forged in blood and sacrifice, hung in the balance. Sullivan closed his eyes, grief and exhaustion washing over him. There was so much to do, so much to rebuild. But for now, for this one moment, he allowed himself to simply breathe, to exist in the knowledge that he had done his duty, that his crew had survived, that there was still hope. And then the moment passed, and the captain of the Odyssey straightened in his chair, his voice steady as he gave the order to begin the long, slow limp back to Earth, back to an uncertain future, a changed galaxy. But one in which perhaps humans and Tholians could find a way to coexist in peace, 
their shared sacrifices, a foundation upon which to build. It was a chance, a fragile hope purchased with the blood of heroes. And Sullivan vowed not to let that sacrifice be in vain. Sullivan and Tora stormed the Odyssey's bridge, pulse rifles spitting searing death. The saboteurs whirled, returning fire in a storm of energy bolts and sizzling beams. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks as the deadly exchange tore through the command center. Sullivan dove behind the helm, popping up to drill a masked figure through the chest. Taurus scuttled along the ceiling, picking off targets with uncanny precision. Together they advanced, a relentless tide of vengeance. The last saboteur fell, blood pooling around his shattered mask. Sullivan ripped it away, revealing a human face contorted in hatred. Why? Sullivan demanded. Why attack the station? Why frame the Tholians? The man spat, his voice laced with venom. Humanity must dominate the stars. The Tholians, all aliens, are beneath us. This was to be the spark, the catalyst for our rightful ascension. Sullivan recoiled in disgust. Human supremacists, fanatics bent on galactic conquest, and they'd nearly succeeded, manipulating both sides to the brink of war. Captain, Taurus called from the comm station. The Nexus is hailing us. Zahal demands an explanation. Sullivan straightened his jaw set. He would give the Admiral the truth, however painful. On the view screen, Zahal's face appeared, mandibles quivering with barely restrained fury. Sullivan, you have much to answer for. Sullivan met the Admiral's glare unflinchingly. Zahal, listen to me. The attack on the station, the sabotage, it wasn't the Tholians. It was human extremists, radicals seeking to drive our people to war. He transmitted the evidence, the saboteurs' confessions, the data trails leading back to shadowy human organizations. Zal reviewed it, his compound eyes widening in shock and revelation. This, this changes everything, the Admiral said slowly. I was wrong about you, Sullivan, about humanity. I allowed old prejudices to cloud my judgment. We both did, Sullivan said quietly, but now we have a chance to... A shrill alarm cut him off. Taurus paled, his voice trembling. The station's power core, it's going critical. On the screen, Hawkins appeared, his face streaked with sweat and grime. Captain, we can't stop it. The core's too far gone. You have to evacuate now. Sullivan's heart clenched, Hawkins, his oldest friend, sacrificing himself to buy them time. He forced down the anguish, the guilt, and gave the order. All hands abandon ship, get to the escape pods. As the bridge crew scrambled to obey, Sullivan turned to Zal. Admiral, you need to withdraw your ship. The blast radius... Understood, Zal said grimly. I will not forget this day, Sullivan, or the truth you've shown me. The screen went dark. Sullivan grabbed Taurus, pulling him towards the lift. We have to go now! They raced through the disintegrating ship, dodging falling debris and geysers of flame. Around them, escape pods blasted away ferrying the crew to tenuous safety. At last they reached the final pod. Sullivan shoved Taurus inside, then hesitated, looking back at his doomed vessel, his home, his purpose. Captain, Taurus cried, there's no time. Sullivan leaped into the pod, slamming the hatch. They rocketed away, the odyssey receding behind them, the station looming ahead. And then oblivion. A searing flash of light, brighter than a thousand suns, a rolling wave of silence, then a thunderous roar as the station exploded, the shock wave slamming into the pod, sending it tumbling end over end. Sullivan clung to the restraints, watching in helpless horror as the Odyssey crumpled, its hull shredding like paper, escape pods scattered like leaves before a hurricane, some winking out in bursts of flame, others spiraling into the void and beyond the nexus reeling in the maelstrom, its shields shimmering, its hull plates buckled and torn. Gradually the chaos subsided, the pod spin stabilized, its emergency beacon pulsing into the endless black. Sullivan slumped back, numb and spent. Taurus laid a trembling feeler on his shoulder, his voice heavy with shared grief. I'm sorry, Captain, for your ship, your crew, those lost on the station. If I had acted sooner, 
been more open to your help? Sullivan shook his head. No, we both let fear and suspicion guide us, but in the end we stood together. We stopped a war. We showed that humans and Tholians can work as one. He met Taurus's gaze, seeing the same pain, the same fragile hope reflected there. Your people will need you now more than ever, Taurus, to help them understand, to build a new way forward. As will yours, Taurus said softly. This is not an end, Sullivan, but a beginning, a chance for both our kinds. Sullivan nodded, too choked with emotion to speak. They drifted there in the silent aftermath of calamity and revelation, two survivors, two unexpected friends, waiting for the rescue they knew would come. But the journey was far from over. As the pod hung in the starlit void, Sullivan's thoughts turned to the future, to the challenges that awaited. The mistrust and animosity between humans and Tholians would not vanish overnight. There would be resistance, setbacks, perhaps even renewed conflict. And what of the supremacists, the shadowy factions that had engineered this catastrophe? They were still out there, nursing their hatred, plotting their next move. Sullivan's fists clenched. He would find them. He would root them out and bring them to justice. He would ensure that the sacrifices of Hawkins, of Varys, of all those lost, would not be in vain. For now, though, there was only the wait, the creeping cold and the glimmer of distant stars, stars that now held the promise of a new era, a new understanding, if only they had the courage to seize it. Sullivan leaned back, his gaze fixed on the infinite expanse, his mind whirling with possibilities and perils yet to come. The battle was over, but the war for the soul of the galaxy had only just begun. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.